go ahead and press record. There Hello. we go. All right, Chuck, take it away. Thanks. Thank you very much. My name is Chuck Tomasi, Senior Developer Evangelist at ServiceNow, and I am going to share my story in hopes that you can employ some of this information in your career journey. But before I get started, I'm going to throw a couple of career tips to you, just so you've got something to chew on for the rest of this. Number one is, of course, follow your passion. As with many of you, I suspect it's technology and more specifically, service now. That's okay, we can all play in the same sandbox. Number two is build your network. I was introduced to some amazing people which led to opportunities that I never would have discovered or uncovered by myself. So keep those in mind, follow your passion and build your network. All right, let's turn back the clock. I'm gonna do a little backstory here, going all the way to the time of the dinosaurs before computers were in my life. As a child, I should have seen the writing on the wall, but again, hindsight is 2020. I loved writing and decoding secret messages with my friends. So watch for this, if you've got kids, see if, see if they're uh, trending towards something like this. It might be a sign that uh, they've got a technical aptitude. Uh, I discovered computers at the age of 17. I know that seems old for uh, nowadays. Kids are introduced to it right from the cradle to the you know, crib and, and everything in between. But they were still pretty new when I came along. I was 17 years old and I used to stay after high school. I used to stay after school while I was still in high school, you know, whatever that was, junior, senior year, and look through the book and type in the programs and modify them and tweak them and, and learn and experiment that way. So that was... That was clearly a passion that I had. I didn't know where it would lead me or what it would do with it, but it was fun. And that's why I liked it. I would even go down to the local college uh, computer lab. They had a computer science lab, made introductions, got to know some people, some upperclassmen, learned a lot from them. And again, following that passion. While I was in college, I got hired as a service technician at a local computer store. Still have the business card for that, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. They, and, and, uh, hooked up with a good friend of mine from a previous job. We were both service technicians. We'd go out and repair power supplies and you know, do the computer repair stuff. While we weren't doing that, we had a pet project and we both co-designed and ran a local dial-up bulletin board system. If you're old enough to remember modems talking to the internet, this was pre-internet. Well, actually, the internet was around, but it wasn't officially the internet. Mid 80s, we had dial up bulletin boards and we created our own and we ran it. And this, I think, is where my love of things talking to other things comes from. And you can still see that in the REST APIs and integrations that we do today. It also was an early signal of my love of community. This was my early community career because you had users on the bulletin board, there were postings. That was just, engaging them was part of the gig, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I eventually, Got a computer science, a bachelor degree in computer science from Northern Michigan University in Marquette, Michigan, as did my parents, as did my daughter. Not the same degree, but same university. My first post-college job, I was hired as a software developer. This is way back before Windows was real popular. I was writing a DOS application to communicate with pay telephones. Again, things talking to other things. And it was a great experience. I could go into that story for days, but I won't. Uh, and and I always had a pet programming project on the side. I was always doing some sort of software development, whether it was the BBS code, because I ran that after I got out of college and, and did that into like the early 90s when the internet kind of became a big thing. Uh, did, I wrote some blog software and, and continue to do that today with ServiceNow apps. I always have something that I have as a pet project, something to keep the skills sharp, something to keep going. In my previous company, I was there for 22 years, I had a number of roles. So after I did software development, I was a Unix system administrator, I was an IT project manager, I was a systems architect, an engineering IT manager, and ultimately ended up as the global service desk manager, which is when I brought in ServiceNow. Now, as a sidebar, while all this was happening, long about 2004, I discovered podcasting. And I might have had a music career because I started learning piano about that time. But then podcasting came up and crushed all my desire to practice piano. So <laughs> and whatever happened to that, I don't know. So I, I started podcasting and that led to other opportunities. I've co-authored a couple of books. Some of you may have seen in the background of our videos, 
poster on the back wall, Podcasting for Dummies. I've done a few editions of that. Currently working on the fourth edition of that with my co-author, T. Morris. We've, we've also authored uh, Teach Yourself WordPress in 10 Minutes. So fun writing books, good experience, following the passion. Back to my day job, in 2010, I was let go. So the takeaways I have from that experience after 22 years at that employer is stay positive and continue to build and maintain your network. That's where you're going to get your next connections from. That's where your opportunities are going to come from. So enough of the career talk, on to my ServiceNow story. So while I was still a customer, I, I attended Knowledge 10. Knowledge 10, 500, employ, uh, 500 attendees, a little bit different than what we're seeing today wow. online with tens of thousands. 500. Wow, my first one was 16. <laughs> 16, I think there were probably about uh, 4,500 or 6,000. It was, it was a lot bigger number. Yeah. I, when I when I think of 500 employees or 500 attendees, uh, I think we get some we get some breakout sessions that are that big now. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, I was honored and privileged enough to have won the first Innovation of the Year award. With the service now had this contest that said, "Show us how you've extended the platform and made an application." And I submitted what became my loaner request application. Oddly enough, just before this recording started. I was working on a new version of that app <laughs> for a completely different reason, but it still exists. It's still around. And while I was at Knowledge 10, I was making connections. I was talking to people just casually, getting business cards, staying in touch with them. And because of that, when I was let go from my day job, my, my previous day job, I had a job offer within three hours, directly linked to the connections I made at Knowledge 10. So when you get to a conference, hopefully we'll get to another conference in person again, make those connections, stay in touch with those people. Uh, an hour after that first job offer, I was pointed to uh, a lead that would eventually get me my ServiceNow job that I started in June of 2010. I started as a senior technical consultant doing discovery deployments, ITSM implementations, uh, moved on to a group called Expert Services, uh, I started the TechNow series, which still lives on. That was in 2013. We've been doing that for over seven years. Very proud and humbled that uh, everybody's still enjoying that. Uh, I was brought into our, uh, what was called professional services. Now it's called customer outcomes. Professional services as an enablement manager. So I was sort of an internal trainer helping our technical consultants learn to do the technical consulting stuff like why timesheets are important and how you can help improve the margin and all that good stuff. Uh, was in pre-sales for a little while as a senior solution consultant. Uh, probably recognized my previous title as a senior TPMM. Not gonna tell you what that's spelled, but uh, building demos, doing a developer evangelist. And now today I am a senior developer evangelist. Happier than ever to be where I am. So. What have you learned? What, what have I learned? Or what have you learned from me? Sadly, I had no plan. Nobody shared anything like this until late in my career. And I often wondered, I, I still wake up in the morning, going, how did a computer science major end up in product marketing? Does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me, but uh, it, it turns out that product marketing needed some technical acumen. I had a depth in the platform because of my passion, because of the experiences, because of everything that I've done. It was really a wonderful opportunity and I am happier than ever. So don't discount a physical location or an organizational change as something you don't want to do because it's not in your wheelhouse. It very may well be and, and be a great growth opportunity. So it's, it's fun to look back and say, how did I get here? Because what I do today making videos, doing demos, sharing information, learning about the platform, working with our product managers, engaging with the customers. It's directly tied to the work I did, quote unquote, yesterday, you know, and, and all my yesterdays before. You look at community, podcasting, writing books, social media, all of that, a lot of that, a lot of that was actually volunteer work before T. Morris approached me for the second edition of Podcasting for Dummies, I was contributing as a writer, just totally whatever, to a magazine, an online publication called Podcast User Magazine. I'd write about microphones and soundproofing and where you should position your chair. Just little things about that. 
Sound familiar? That's kind of what I'm doing for service now, right now, because just contribute, contribute, contribute. Uh, I heard a, a wise man once say, give until it hurts and, and you will be greatly rewarded. So it's, it, I always try to give until it hurts. Uh, now, imagine what could have happened if I had a plan. <laughs> That's, I wish somebody would have come forth and said, you know, grow your network, maintain those connections, shake your hands and introduce your people a little sooner than 10 years ago. Actually, it was more like 12 years ago, but it was, it was a great experience. So hopefully, if you're earlier in your career, you can, you can start to do that. Keep track of your accomplishments, too, because someone's going to ask you at some point, what have you done? Tell me about a time you did this. And, and it's good to have that record of things. Because if you ask me what I did when I was 23, 24 years old in my career, it's a stretch. It's very general information. So, uh, um, like Sylvia just asked, how do you find the time to keep track of all the new stuff? If you have to, if you, does it? Good question. Huh? Uh, Great question. I have a document. I keep mine in Evernote. You can keep it wherever you like, Google Drive, OneDrive, whatever. Uh, I, and quarterly, I have a recurring task on my to-do list that says, go update your career history document. This is the basis for your resume. So when it comes time to find a new job or somebody asks for your resume, you can cull out the information from that career history document and have accomplishments. Real quick tip, keep them... Uh, focused on actions like i delivered this particular project on time under budget you know things that speak to a manager if if your if your uh resume just says i have experience in javascript it doesn't really make you stand out from everybody else so i could i could do a whole other series on on building a resume but i won't <laughs> <laughs> and it, it really, really works because that's how I, I got to ServiceNow so quickly. Uh, and, and growing your career like that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to become a manager, a director, VP, SVP. You know, I'm, I am an individual contributor today. I am at the bottom of the org chart. There are something like seven layers from me to Bill McDermott. And you know what? I couldn't be happier today. I am, you can still be considered a leader in your space without having to move up the org chart. If you do, I mean, obviously that's a great thing for your career. If you want to be a manager, a VP, and your vision is someday to be CEO, or you want to break off and start your own company, bless you. I wish you all the best. Your career path is different than mine. But just keep in mind that uh, when somebody says, where do you want to be in five years? It doesn't necessarily mean you have to move up that org chart. They'd like to. Many organizations want that because they're growing and they need leadership, but you can lead in other ways. And I'm very happy and very humbled to be part of uh, the ever-growing community. So it, I didn't have a plan. I advise you to make a plan and, and see where you want to go. But be general uh, so that you have some flexibility. Uh, or otherwise, you'll find that fate intervenes. <laughs> And you'll say, hey, I wanted to go over here. And I was blind to some opportunities that were over there that could have uh, equally been uh, useful. So when people ask me, this is, it's funny because we just asked a question on one of our podcasts. We have a question of the week that says, what one question do you hate the most? And the one that I used to hate the most was when somebody says, where do you want to be in five years? Because the roles I have today didn't exist about six months before I got there. I'm sure in somebody's head, they were thinking, we need a role to do this. You know, when you think about senior enablement manager or uh, uh, T senior TPMM, or, or they, they just didn't exist. They weren't there. So I couldn't say, I want to be a developer evangelist. Although I think I did for the last few years, but that's an exception. It, trying, to, trying to pigeonhole yourself into a title it's a great idea to have a direction, but don't be specific. The reason I didn't like that is because it was too specific. I, and, and throughout my last job at 22 years, I'd say, where do you want to be in five years? I could never really give a succinct answer until I finally broke it down and said, you know what? I'm going to make this more general and be much happier. So when they say, where do you want to be in five years? If somebody asks that today, I say, I want to be in a place where I can learn information. I can share that information with others to help them be more effective, to 
drive interest, to energize and evangelize. And you know, that sounds a lot like my current role, but you know, I would expand on that for whatever comes next. So somebody says, where do you see yourself in five years? Be general and follow that passion, follow those dreams. And the answer will come out a lot easier than, you know, I see myself being the product manager of this particular division. Okay. The, the new features within ServiceNow, like, you know, if it's grown enormously, just like your own career and, and all of your skills, how do you keep those new features in mind and, and learning about them so quickly to share? I've had to increasingly focus my attention. Uh, it, it, there was a time when I knew ITSM pretty well, but it has grown. I haven't done an ITSM implementation in about six or seven years. It's, it's really expanded. So as the platform and the products and applications on the platform have grown and grown and grown, I, I don't have the bandwidth to learn them all. I don't know SecOps or GRC or a lot of these you know, uh, larger functions. I, I know some about things like performance analytics. I know some about uh, you know, the ITOM capabilities, but I'm certainly not a subject matter expert in that field because there is so much to learn and you know, we all only have so much time. So what I've done is focused my energies on my interests the platform, the development tools, the integrations. Again, getting back to my childhood interest of things talking to other things, I want to send a REST API and get information back. I want to create an application that puts records in a table and something happens and I get new information back. That's, that's where my interests are and how can I make that happen in a fun and engaging way? Hence the Jeopardy application from last year. That was, that was all service now, but it was a whole lot of fun. And I, I learned things along the way about record watcher and message passing and events and service portal. And it was a lot of great learning that I could then turn around and share. I don't know if everyone knows about the, the Jeopardy. Don't. Well, the Jeopardy app is on the share page on the developer site at developer.servicenow.com. I, I created that as a, just a fun and engaging way to do. We played it three times in the, the uh, Creator Con Theater at Knowledge 19, and perhaps we'll play it again at Knowledge 21, but it's available out there with some sample data if you want to download it and take a look at it. Okay. So we are, we are rounding out our time, roughly, Lisa. Let me, like, should I wrap this up? Almost, I think we, it's got like, what, eight minutes left or so? It, um, so Brian says, it sounds like fun projects help avoiding burnout. Um, they, do. Yeah. they do, they do. Uh, you know, some people who say, when do you sleep or, you know, when do you, how do you separate work from your, <laughs> your personal life? I, I got lucky because I was able to take my personal love of doing development and podcasting and mesh those together to deliver something that ServiceNow finds valuable. I got really, really lucky. I feel very blessed to be able to, to engage in that way. What I'm doing right here, right now is only a few feet away from what I do as a hobby on Sunday night when we do our podcasts. It's even using much of the same equipment. So it, it's, it, it's very hard for me to separate, especially because I work at home. <laughs> when do you ever, do you, do you really leave work? Or do you really go home? Or do you really get to work? I'm not sure what's what anymore. But uh, I know there are many people, I, I'll, I'm also at a time in my life where my children are grown. So that changes the dynamics a bit. Many of you have of children at home. You're in a very tough situation right now where the children are homeschooled. And I understand that and appreciate that. So everybody's situation is going to be a little different. Invest what you can in your career. Even when I had kids, I was doing pod, uh, children at home. I was doing the podcasts. It wasn't the production value we have today. It wasn't the equipment. It wasn't the budget. But it led to bigger things. It was... I was doing what I love, and that led to other opportunities. So again, follow your passion. It doesn't have to be exactly what I did. You may not want my job. <laughs> it's, it may not exist in a year. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other questions, Lisa? Yeah, Patrick um, has asked, uh, speaking of things, talking to other things, can you talk a little bit about getting the Internet of Things devices and the maker space? I'm not sure. Uh, I'll take a stab at that question. I'm not sure I understand it 100%, but the, um, 
the the internet of things is a rapidly growing market because there are so many sensors and processors and whatnot going around and putting the processing power on the edge is really going to be effective in the future but somebody still has to collect all that information one of our internal skunk works projects is around the internet of things i i can't speak to it uh, even with a safe harbor statement i don't know enough about it to give you full information as a hobby i've done some of this myself i've taken the amazon iot dash buttons push the button it goes off to amazon runs a lambda function sends an uh, a, a rest request to service now and it does something. So when I turn on the lights or turn on the studio in my house, that's done with an Amazon dash button. Rather than yelling at Alexa to turn off my bedside lamp or the ceiling fan, I push a button so that my wife can continue sleeping or I can continue sleeping if she wants the fan on or off. So we, you know, again, pet projects leading to other things. And the customer story in that use case is Put a smart button over by the coffee pot or the men's room to say, I'm out of paper towels, or we need coffee filters, or the copy machine is broken, or things aren't working right in the conference room. Great way to open a ticket in service now. So you can do that with just a push of a button. We had those in our corporate headquarters in Santa Clara for uh, about a year or so, and they're placing with QR codes, but still a fun project and a great customer use case. So I find fun things on my desk and work out from there and say, how can our customers benefit from this knowledge? So my takeaways, I'm going to wrap this up because we are starting to run a little short on time. Uh, my takeaways for this are build and maintain your network. That's just good career advice. Uh, Take a look at what you enjoy doing today and think how it can help you get to that next position. Even if that next position doesn't exist today in your organization, it may or you may be able to find a company that can value that. And absolutely, absolutely, do what you love and follow your passion. That is what led me to the top of the leaderboard on the community. Posting and sharing and learning and that that's really what uh, I think the bottom line on this is how I got to the top of the leaderboard. I followed my passion. I did what I love and I shared that passion with other people. And as a closing fun fact, I mentioned a little bit about this earlier. I have a collection of every single business card I've ever had in my career going all the way back to that first service technician job in college, which is right the, the building is still there. I don't know that the, the business is long gone, but the building is still there. I worked at a computer land store, which was a uh, computer chain based out of California. But uh, our branch, that's where I did my bulletin board work. And that's where we did the uh, replacing power supplies and whatnot. So a lot of fun. And uh, it's sort of like a resume in my pocket, but it's fun to look through the old logos and whatnot. Thank you very much for attending today. Hope you found it a little educational, a little informational, maybe somewhat interesting. and. Got to know me a little bit better. I so. still think we have a, just a few more minutes. My clock says it's Fair way. minutes. Okay. So let's see if we got anyone. You, uh, you know, this is an opportunity to unmute yourself and you know ask a question to Mr. Chuck Tomasi. You know, one of my favorite things is Chuck is uh, I've always had fun um, on the community with you, uh, doing your events and also helping you with your blog. So some of that magic is that he, that Chuck gets on the communities behind the scenes. The Somebody like myself, I'm here to help anyone else want to do some of those um, items on the community as well, right? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It is and I hope other people are inspired to help out on the community as well. We'll talk more about that in the uh, session about becoming a subject matter expert. That's coming up in, um, let's see, 135 minutes. <laughs> 30 wow, segue to the next segment. <laughs> Join us back here. <laughs> You know, and then this, this is being recorded and it's going to be, um, I'm going to put it back into the chat again. It is going to be placed on the community in a little while. It's not doing live stream to YouTube, but I do need to download it and then upload it again. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what that happens. Give me about an hour to get that up. Um, Paul Morris asks, what is your favorite developer tool? Um, good question. Uh, it's a toss up. I really like Studio. I, I find it very useful to do the source control integration, switching branches. I was doing that a number of times this morning, keeping things collected in one place and just being able to see multiple tabs. I love Studio. A second runner up has got to be the REST API Explorer. Again, because of the love of integrations, I want to make sure things work right before 
uh, before I use them in, in, in a production capacity. So I'll often build up my, uh, my applications and use REST APIs a lot in my service portal widgets. So I've got that uh, to go on and it's been very, very helpful. Okay. You've done a lot on GitHub too. Oh, well, Paul asks if you use Explore. Not exactly official, but a great tool. It is a great tool. I don't use it as much as I should, just like I don't use um, the script debugger as much as I should, just like I probably don't put enough comments in as much as I should. So yes, there are things that I should be doing, but often in the interest of time, I've got to move from use case to use case and demo to demo. But um, things that I do put out on share, I try to document and, and put them in. So uh, Explore is a very wonderful tool. Thanks to James Neal for putting that out. It's hugely popular. I think that's our most downloaded thing on the share page. So take a look at it. It's X-P-L-O-R-E. There's no leading E. So you can find that. Very useful. It's sort of like Scripps background on super steroids. Wonderful stuff. Okay. And Derek Jackson says, it's not a question, but he just wanted to thank Chuck for your participation on the community side. As a sole guy responsible for ServiceNow at, a, at his organization, he's constantly reviewing the community for assistance and have learned quite a bit from you. Chuck says, okay. That's how I started. I, I was asking questions on the community back in 2008, 2009. People, names you see in the demo data were ask, answering mine back then. Don Goodliffe is a real person. He's, he was, he's got one out there. There's even a humorous answer that I, I've lost track of, but it was something like, you know, I said, Don, can I give you a call? He said, well, sadly, I work in a dark room with no windows and <laughs> you can't, I'm not allowed to take calls. But it was something along those lines that uh, we find funny to this day. But ask questions in the community. And then as you start to build your experience, certainly uh, pay it forward. Well, maybe that dark room is a good segue into the next question is, have, have you ever worked out how many points you get on an average day? Uh, there was a time in 2016 when I was full on, I think my record was about 2,000 points a day. But, and, and I was averaging over 1,000. Today, it's far, far less. In fact, I have sadly been absent most of Q2 because of prep for knowledge. Yeah, that is, it's been, knowledge has been a, a very interesting, you know, way of doing something new. Yes, exploring new things. We've got the, uh, the community live stream series has been revamped and is, is becoming hugely popular. Thank you very much for all of your viewing on that. We've got one more minute. We'll wrap up so that everyone can get to their next sessions. Uh, let's see if anyone else has any more questions. But if not, you know, we always love hearing and seeing things. What's the fastest way to get to some of your most top content? Do you have a URL that you want to talk about your best content from our community? Uh, great question. Uh, my ServiceNow community content I really need to start indexing the new stuff. Um, but TechNow has its own page. There's a bit.ly link you can use, bit.ly slash servicenow dash technow. So just spell it out, servicenow dash technow. That's dashes in a minus. And that will take you to the index page of the 75 or so episodes we've got going back to 2016, or 2013. That's the easiest way to find the TechNow episodes. I do not currently have an episode list. Oh, actually, there's a playlist on the YouTube channel. If you go to, if you go to the Now Community YouTube channel, there's a playlist called Community Livestream. I should have thought of that one. So there's another link for you. All right. Well, well great. Well, we're going to wrap this up so everyone can get on to their next one. Thank you so much, Chuck, and we'll see you in about an hour, actually. All right. Thank you on the community. Thanks. Thank you all.